Hi everyone and um, welcome back uh, online for this uh, part of the course where we will be talking about uh, denoising images. First of all we need to define what is noise. Um, so to understand what is noise uh, we need to have a, a global view of the image processing pipeline. Uh, we have seen that uh, the quality of an image was dependent on uh, the lighting system, on the scene itself, on the choice of the optic, choice of the sensor, how many pixels, how many bits, and then on the image processing. And then we want to extract information from this uh, processed image. So we acquire images not to, to just look at beautiful images, but to extract information uh, that they carry. We call noise whatever is degrading the performances of the information tasks that motivated the image acquisition. An informational definition distinct from physics, where actually um, we only look for beautiful images. And um, uh, here, in our case, uh, the, the level of noise doesn't depend on the beautifulness of the image, on the cleanness of the image, but on the informational task. So the noise in images uh, can uh, come from various origins, like uh, light, um, maybe like on this uh, image here, we don't have a uniform uh, lighting, there's slow variation of intensity. There can be also shadows of uh, an object, uh, like uh, fast variations of intensity. Light, it can come also from light properties, light flow is not continuous, like we have, uh, uh, like on this uh, microscopy image, some particles uh, that are not coming um, continuously and uh, uh, image have a grainy appearance. This is what happens when we are working under low flow of uh, light. And uh, we have a poison noise when we have weak flow of light. Object also can move, uh, uh, like we have here on this image with the, um, an animal in the, uh, in the country, uh, in the forest. So motion uh, with time, integrated time of the camera, which causes blurred uh, image. Also, a distortion can come from optic, uh, lens of aberration, we have already uh, told this, and optical filtering of fine details uh, will uh, be a consequence of this uh, aberration. So the optical passing through an optics um, corresponds to a convolution that will somehow uh, blur a bit the image. Also, uh, noise can be due to the sensor itself, thermal noise, independent and equally distributed according to Gaussian uh, uh, law distribution is what you will have uh, as a background noise of, uh, on the sensor. You can also have uh, impulse noise uh, corresponding to uh, salt and pepper. Uh, some pixels are not defined. Uh, this typically occurs when you are using some depth uh, sensor like uh, the, the, the Kinect sensor. Also, combination of images with uh, thermal noise uh, can cause uh, AV uh, tail distribution like the Cauchy uh, uh, noise. And again, you can have quantification noise with a uh, uniform distribution, which is due to the uh, level of bit, number of bit on which you will compress your images. Now, let's try to denoise, remove this noise. And uh, we will focus on the most uh, ubiquitous uh, situation where we have thermal noise. So the situation where uh, in a flat part of the image, actually, if you have a, an histogram on only this part, you will see that you have a non, uh, not a, a single mode in the histogram, but something which is flattened and uh, distributed along Gaussian noise. Uh, so the optimal statistic in the sense of the mean square uh, error is averaging. So the best uh, denoising you could do is by uh, averaging. So you can, uh, there are different techniques, uh, panel of techniques, and um, we are going to, to, to see only a small number of them, filtering by temporal averaging, filtering by spatial linear averaging, convolution, and uh, but so on. Uh, uh, other uh, techniques can also, uh, more advanced techniques also exist, but we won't go through them in this course. So temporal denoising. Let's assume we have a static scene and we have the possibility to acquire multiple images at different times. So if we do the averaging, so summation, we know how to do this now, and then averaging uh, out of the number of uh, images, then we will have something that will bring denoising of the image. Yeah. Uh, but it's not always possible to do uh, this uh, temporal uh, uh, 
denoising, like acquiring multiple uh, image, uh, images of the same scene because the scene is moving or because images take a long time to be acquired or many uh, reasons because it also takes time to take uh, images. And uh, in this case, uh, temporal denoising, uh, if it's not accessible, we can assume that objects uh, in images are piecewise constants, meaning that when we are at a place in image, the neighbors somehow are almost uh, identical, except with the noise, which is randomly distributed. Uh, so uh, if you average locally, somehow you will uh, keep the uh, original uh, gray level value, which should have, should have been a constant, and remove the noise. So it's possible to denoise locally by performing this uh, operation, which is the convolution. So you will sweep uh, this uh, local um, uh, weighted uh, uh, sum uh, uh, through all the uh, image, and this is called uh, convolution. So uh, equivalent to a local, uh, local mean uh, in the image. So here we give an example where in this small image that we have uh, uh, equal weights, meaning that the um, filter pixel uh, here, uh, highlighted in red, will uh, provide in the end this value. So 63 multiplied by 1 out of 9, 7, 67 multiplied by 1 out of 9, and so on, on all the um, uh, on all the small uh, images, and this is the new value of the denoised image. So we have basically averaged uh, the, uh, the value uh, around the uh, pixel to be processed. So in image it will be uh, called this by process convolve, and we will have the possibility to fix the value of the weights that we put in this small image. So there is, of course, an influence of the size of the image. Here, for instance, if you take this image and you increase the size of this image, which starts by 3 by 3 pixels to a 9 by 9 pixel, you will see that the high, the largest the uh, image, the blurriest uh, the, uh, the, the image, the more blurry uh, 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 the image appears. Of course, uh, uh, the optimal size of uh, this will depend not on the size of the uh, image, but on the size of the object. So, for instance, if I take an image which is reduced by a factor of 2, uh, we see that the blurry appearance that we got at uh, 9 by 9 almost now appear at 5 by 5. Uh, so, the size of the image has to be uh, uh, rational, uh, rationalized uh, in terms of uh, the size of the object we want to preserve. So more or less, uh, a rule of thumb is that you will uh, have a small image which should be smaller than the smaller object you want to preserve. Okay, instead of, uh, yes, averaging uh, democratically with weight, same weights uh, to all neighbors, uh, it's likely that the far you are from the pixel you want to process, the uh, less likely uh, you can make the assumption that you are still at the same uh, gray level of value. And so what you could do is decrease the uh, prior uh, knowledge that you have that you were on the center of the, this uh, pixel and uh, decrease the weight of this uh, contribution as you depart from the center of the image. So uh, one way of decreasing from uh, this uh, center is uh, the uh, Gaussian blur. So you are very high when you are close to the central pixel and you decrease as you depart uh, from the central pixel along to uh, um, Gaussian, uh, Gaussian uh, function uh, parameterized by a, a standard deviation sigma. So this is accessible also in Imagine as process filter Gaussian blur. Um, averaging is uh, the best thing you can do when you have non uh, when you have Gaussian noise, but noise is not always Gaussian. We have uh, no, uh, notably pointed the possibility of uh, impersonal uh, noise when some missing pixels, especially when you are using some lidar uh, images. And in this case, it's not good to do some Gaussian filtering or averaging filtering because somehow uh, you are just uh, somehow if you have a, 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 some outliers, you will just um, blur your outliers, but you will not remove uh, this outlier. So one way of removing this outlier is to use a, 
um, nonlinear filter called um, median filter, where actually instead of computing a weighted average around the central pixel, you simply average the median, uh, which is the value under which you have equal number of pixels below and above. And in this case, when you fall out on, a, on this outlier pixel, you see that it's removed by this uh, mean uh, median value. It's, very, it's much less sensitive, it's actually not sensitive at all to outliers. So it's, if you remove 80 by 1 million, uh, somehow the median value is still 27. And so you will manage to completely remove outliers as visible on this illustrative example. But we will have an hands-on specially dedicated to, to this. Please uh, uh, look at this video and do the exercise on your side. And we continue uh, on uh, extracting information now uh, from the uh, images. So we left the um, low-level uh, image processing and moved to a middle uh, level of uh, image processing, where now we want to extract features uh, from the images. And the idea is that I put this into the single same um, video because actually the tools that we are going to use are the same as uh, the tools for denoising, meaning this convolution, this uh, weighted uh, sum uh, locally that are, is going to be swept on the whole image. So let's go now in detail in this. So what is the content uh, in an image? The type of features, the type of uh, sorry patterns uh, that we would, could like to uh, be likely to, to, to extract. So for instance, we have uh, homogeneous regions, like uh, this part of the leaf eave. Here we can have also textures, so uh, grainy appearance uh, structure. We can have also objects, or also we can have ed edges, like, like, like here. So we're going to see uh, types of filter, uh, which are uh, specially dedicated to enhancing regions or enhancing edges uh, of interest. So the structures in uh, images are defined in terms of region and uh, edges. A region is an area of the images homogeneous from a certain point of view, and an edge is the limit between two adjacent regions. So let's start with the, uh, detecting the, uh, the edges. An edge is a rapid variation from a certain point of view. So here, for instance, we have a very edgy uh, variation of gray levels. Here, still a, 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 vi a variation which is still fast. But here, the variation of gray level is spread out through the entire image. We cannot call this, honestly, an edge. Edge uh, will be sensitive. The presence of edge will be sensitive to noise. So for instance, here, you have a very small number amount of uh, noise in the image, and we see a uh, plot profile of the of this image, and we can still, despite the presence of noise, still distinguish where the edges are located. But when uh, the amount of noise is higher, then it's much harder to detect from the profile itself where the edge is. However, when we look at the image by itself, uh, we still see some regions where there are statistically differences, and this is uh, where uh, you would rather go uh, for uh, features of characteristic of a region rather than detecting edges. So when you want to uh, detect an object, either you highlight homogeneous regions, this is especially useful when you have noisy images, or if you have non-noisy images, you can highlight the, um, uh, the edges, and then uh, if you have the edges of the object or the region, it's easy to uh, fill out uh, this, uh, these regions. Also, another way, if your images is, are noisy, is to first do a denoising and then do the detection of edges. We will see this in details in some use case. So how are we going mathematically to uh, detect these edges? Basically, an edge is a rapid variation, so it can, it's similar to a gradient. And this gradient of gray levels, we can have access to them by the first derivative of the function. So here, if you have the uh, gray level as a function of uh, x, uh, so along the uh, profile, and we see, uh, we compute the slope, it's going to be zero here, then it's increasing, so we have a positive derivative, then it's decreasing to zero again on the plateau, and then it's decreasing negatively, so negative value of uh, the first derivative, and then it's flat again, so we have zero derivative. So if we take the absolute value of this first derivative, we're going to have bumps, uh, blobs, uh, that appears 
uh, when we have uh, uh, a gray level, which uh, a, a rapid uh, variation of gray level. So we can, for instance, threshold uh, this, um, uh, this first derivative of the image, and uh, we will have ones where we have the uh, borders and zeros uh, everywhere else. So how to do this first derivative mathematically? Uh, you might remember that the first derivative is the limit of f of x plus delta x minus f of x uh, divided by uh, delta x. And in our case, when delta x tends to zero, and in our case, delta x, the smallest values you can take is one. You cannot, there is nothing real in uh, numerical images uh, below uh, two uh, pixels. So uh, this is what you are going to do. So if you take uh, an image which is simply two values, which is plus one and minus one, you just do the difference between two consecutive pixels. If you do it horizontally, you will have a vertical uh, gradient. If you do it uh, vertically, we have the horizontal uh, gradient. So uh, this is what you will have for vertical edges, horizontal edges. And if you do the summation of the two, then you have all the uh, all the edges in the image. It's also possible to uh, compute uh, derivative with uh, second, uh, the, the, the edges with the second derivative with the Laplacian, but I'm not going to go in detail in this, in this course. So when you take your image, you compute the gradient and you threshold, then you have the edges in the image. This is how it happens. Here again, we will have uh, another hands-on dedicated to this uh, topic and see how it's sensitive to, uh, to noise. Now we have seen how we would uh, detect edges. So basically, we, we use this convolutional process. But instead of taking um, only positive value, which uh, are equivalent to weighted sum, if we take positive and negative value, we will do some differences on of pixels which are uh, placed locally close to each other. And this corresponds to a derivative. We have uh, the variation of gray levels, which are highlighted after this filter. Now, if we want to uh, enhance uh, regions with uh, similar uh, statistics, what we can do is instead of uh, computing uh, averages or instead of uh, computing derivative, we can compute some statistics of interest. So for instance, we could compute the average value or the standard uh, deviation or any, uh, any other uh, uh, statistics that we believe of interest. So, uh, for instance, here, uh, from this image, if we uh, take an image of 16 by 16 and we can compute the mean or a variance, this is what we have. Of course, the image is not nice anymore, but it's not the goal. The goal is to highlight parts of the images which share the same statistics or the same mean or the same variance. So, again, these statistics can be computed with a convolution. And here, I give you a list of what can be computed. So, there are uh, many of uh, many of them, so centered moment of order k, k uh, which includes the average or which includes the variance for centered uh, moment of order k uh, equal to 2 and uh, other uh, uh, stuff which basically will uh, sum up the shape of the histogram in a single scalar. So let me sweep this. I will come back to it uh, later if you have questions on, on this, if you want to go deeper on this. So let's take this situation where we have different patterns. It could be a remote sensing from a, uh, uh, looking at fields from a, a, a UAV or an airplane. And you would like to highlight one specific uh, one. So if you pick up the right statistic that is discriminative from the other part, like for instance variance in this case, you see that you have a high variance uh, here and uh, that you could easily threshold this image to uh, get only this part of the image, while at the beginning all the gray levels were pretty close to each other. So by enhancing the statistical differences between each part of the image, you can somehow uh, get a better contrast after this, uh, this process, and then being able to, for instance, just threshold this image to get the uh, uh, area of interest. Okay, um, we will move to a last type of um, local processing uh, here, which, more, uh, which is called morphological, uh, mathematical morphology. 
So imagine that you have processed your, uh, your image, so just uh, like we have seen, either enhancing the edges or either enhancing uh, regions, and then you put a threshold after this, and well, okay, there are still some kind of stuff which are not completely satisfactory. So you have this binary image, and maybe you would like to withdraw these small blobs, or on the other side, you would like to connect these small blobs to the bigger object, and uh, there are some tricks on how to do this, and this is what we're going to see here. Basically, these tricks are called erosion and dilatation. So erosion is like if you had a knife and you were cutting uh, one slice of pixel around the object, and dilatation is the other way around, is adding a slice of pixel around the object. Mathematically, it's working the, this way. You still have a kind of local uh, image that we're going, you're going to sweep on the whole image, and in this case, what you would do for dilatation, for instance, is if there is uh, intersection between uh, the content of the image of reference, uh, so the structuring element that you see on the upper left part of this image, and the, uh, what it sees when it's locating at one part of the uh, image, if there is something in common, then the central pixel will uh, get to the value of the structuring element. So after applying this, you will see that uh, whenever there is something in common uh, between uh, this image and the, the image um, of the structuring element, it changes it to uh, a black pixel. So there is nothing occurring here because when you put this structuring element uh, in the first part, there was nothing in common. So this is why it keeps it like this. So we, this is called the dilatation. And erosion is the same, but if there is only if uh, the content of the structuring elements so of the small image jet, which is swept on the wall image and what it sees in the image is exactly the same so only if it's exactly fixed in the intersection is exactly the full content of the image then it keeps the original value so in this case you will uh, come up to, to, to this so as you have seen earlier this was uh, adding one layer of pixel and in this case it's withdrawing one layer of pixel and this is mathematically how it's going, going to do this um, in images. So, of course, you can pick up different types of structuring elements, and uh, it will give you different uh, results, uh, like here, and um, like here. Also. So, again, there will be um, uh, hands on on this, please check it out and uh, see how it can be useful to process this uh, image. So it's possible to combine these erosion and dilatation. If you do erosion followed by dilatation, so first you add one layer and then you withdraw one layer, it will not be equivalent to identity because when you uh, increase one layer, you may connect two parts which are not connected, and then when you uh, erase one layer, the two parts which are co connected may still be connected. So that's called fermeture, so closure. And uh, on the other side, if you start with an erosion and then you do a dilatation, while doing an erosion, if you completely erase a small object, it's not going to be really redilated uh, afterwards. So it's called overture, opening. And in this case, it can withdraw a small object for opening, and for closer, it will connect two big objects that were almost connected to each other, but not exactly touching, so you help them to touch each other, and then when you redraw only one layer, you keep the two objects connected in the end. So, again, a last hands-on that uh, I encourage you to, to, to go through to put this uh, in practice. In further video, we will go in more advanced, uh, more advanced uh, image processing uh, things. So please check out that you have uh, followed all the uh, material of uh, this uh, video. Basically, it was about how we can do local processing by sweeping a small image and do either uh, weighted uh, sum to do some kind of averaging for denoising or uh, differences to highlight uh, edges or statistics to highlight part of the image which share the same statistical properties and uh, then further threshold the, uh, the image uh, corresponding to each region. So that was the spirit of this, uh, of this video and see you in the next one.